Welcome to Season 3 of the To Health With That podcast, where we break up big topics into small bites. I'm your host, Dr. Amy Newsel, and I'm joined by my dear friend, women's health and fertility expert, naturopathic physician, Kate Namas, to break down infertility, hormones, and the whole baby-making shebang. Okay. This week, in order to know what's not normal, it's important that we also know what's normal. So let's talk about a normal cycle, meaning menstrual cycle for women and spermatogenesis for men. And next week, we'll get into the basics about our hormones. So Kate, (laughs) tell me how you would break up a woman's menstrual cycle. Yes. So I break it up into four phases. Um, and let's just start now. So cycle day one is the first day of menstrual bleeding of a new cycle. That's how we notate it. Mm -hmm. And so if you're charting your cycles or notating them in any way, cycle day one means the first day of bleed. And in medical terms, we say the last normal menstrual period when we are dating a pregnancy. Mm -hmm. So if you are actively trying to conceive, it's really important that you know the first day of each new cycle so that when you do get pregnant, you can let your doctor know and then they can better date your due date. Yes. It's also, I think, important for women, no matter what, to chart our cycles. I mean, this this is a huge thing that matters for us because if you don't know where you are in your cycle, you don't know what's happening in your body. And also you can get caught really unawares by like your normal stuff, right? Totally. Mood swings or symptoms or bleeding. (laughs) That's a thing. Yeah. Yeah. So I consider the first miniature phase, the menstrual phase where you're bleeding. Agreed. Uh, And then the cycle is broken up into two larger phases. The Mm -hmm. first 14 days, if we're talking about a traditional textbook, 28 day cycle, the first 14 days is the follicular phase the second 14 days is the luteal phase. And they're named because during the first half of the menstrual cycle, the follicle sitting inside of the ovary that Mm -hmm. will become the egg that's released to be fertilized is maturing. And so the follicular phase, then we have ovulation where our body releases the egg that is available to be fertilized. And Mm -hmm. then after ovulation, we have the luteal phase. And then I break up the luteal phase into the first half of the phase and then the second half, which is the premenstrual phase. So Mm -hmm. for me, the four phases are bleeding, Mm -hmm. the second half of the follicular phase, Mm -hmm. that ends with ovulation, the Mm -hmm. luteal phase starts, and then the second half of the luteal phase is the premenstrual phase. So I would actually call ovulation its own phase because, oh, I like that. you know, for me, because there is that kind of two to three day window around ovulation. And of course, ovulation is sort of instantaneous. It happens in right. a moment, but there is that time period around ovulation when we have this massive hormonal shift. Absolutely. And so I usually break that out into a phase as well. So what we're really like looking that. at is kind of five. Hmm. Yeah, I like that. Yeah. Um, And then if you're looking at a textbook, they divide it into follicular and luteal. Um, But as a woman, as a person experiencing their menstrual cycles, we experience them in four or five phases because we feel different in each of those phases because of how the hormones are changing. Exactly. And so a word to the hormones in that menstrual phase. So a lot of women experience that they feel better during their menses, right? Mm -hmm. Um, Unless you have endo. (laughs) Unless you have endo, in which case you feel drastically worse. Yes, yes. (laughs) But during that menstrual phase, all of our hormones are at their lowest ebb, right? So this is estrogens, progesterone, and also the pituitary hormones that signal everything to happen, right? Which is uh, LH and FSH. Everything is lowest, even body temperature is at its lowest. Exactly, yeah. And the other piece that I'm sure we'll go into is the follicular phase is noted as the estrogen dominant part of our cycle. And then the luteal phase is the progesterone dominant part of our cycle. So after we move out of this menstrual phase where we're bleeding and all of our hormones for the month 
are at an all time low, then our estrogen starts to rise. Mm -hmm. And in that second half of the follicular phase, we have this nice rising estrogen, which makes a lot of women feel really good. Yes, that's true. Yeah. Follicular phase is sort of like, go get them, rah, rah, rah. This is when we do stuff. Yes. Absolutely. And though there are women who will have menstrual migraines at this phase where you're at the end of the follicular ovulating, mm-hmm. and then other women will have menstrual migraines in that PMS phase, the end of the luteal phase, mm-hmm. when our hormones start to drop again. So anytime we have a drastic hormonal change, then we can also get some menstrual migraines or some other symptoms as well. And this is why charting is so important because I've seen so many people come to my office. So many women come to my office who say, you know, I get a hormone once, maybe twice a month. Um, And I'll say, well, does it follow your cycle? And they'll say, well, I don't know, right? But it's a pretty quick determinant to see, you know, just chart for a couple of months. You'll see if it follows your cycle because that is something we can usually moderate. It's something we can help with. Right, exactly. Yeah. Okay. So in the menstrual cycle, the uterine lining is shedding. Um, We start with this because conventionally day one of your cycle is the first day you bleed. Your Mm -hmm. hormones and body temperature are at their lowest point. And this is the beginning of the follicular phase. Exactly. Then we go into the follicular phase. The ovaries are doing their work. They're ripening the follicle. Estrogen is on the rise. It peaks just before ovulation. And then our pituitary hormone in our brain is also secreting hormones, luteinizing hormone and follicle stimulating hormone that help us to release that egg. And then our body temperatures go from a lower, more steady level in the follicular. And then after ovulation, we have this rise in body temperature because progesterone is thermogenic. It increases body heat. And that's one of the easy ways that we can see sort of where we're ovulating. Although some women have ovulatory symptoms as well. Right. Absolutely. I definitely do. A lot of women in my practice notice that right around when they're ovulating, they notice lower abdominal bloating Mm -hmm. that's transient. And sometimes people will reach out to me thinking that they have gastro symptoms, gut symptoms, Mm -hmm. when in fact, it's just hormonal changes. Um, It has nothing to do with the foods they're eating. It's simply how those hormones are impacting bloating and lower GI symptoms. And that's really common. Well, and a lot of women too bloat in one half of the cycle or the other, right? So it looks like they have this relapsing and remitting GI problem, but it's not. (laughs) Right. It's hormones. Hormones. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Right. So work on the hormones, less on the diet is my opinion on that one. Yes. Yeah, Mm -hmm. exactly. Exactly. Uh, I also get an ovulatory symptom called metal schmerz, which is one of my favorite words. Mm-hmm. Um, so metal schmerz is usually for me, a uh, sharp pain, um, when I ovulate, right. So I can feel it when my ovaries release an egg, although I can only feel it on one side. <laughs> That's fascinating. I have it as well. Mm-hmm. Oh, you do. I, I hear, I don't know if this is a fact, but I absolutely see that as women age, they have more middle schmerz. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I think that's been true for me. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, Yeah. because I remember, you know, the first time I felt it, I was probably in my mid Mm twenties. Uh, and then I was concerned. I thought I had maybe like a cyst or something like that. Right. Absolutely. And that, I think that's worth talking about. So women will sometimes wonder if there's some dangerous thing happening because they're having ovarian pain. And absolutely. If you have pain that's causing you to double over and is not going away, that's a reason to reach out to your doctor immediately so they can do an ultrasound and see what's going on. Or just go to the ER. Exactly, Mm -hmm. exactly. So middle spurts is manageable. A ruptured cyst is a whole nother level. Yeah, yeah, Yeah. (laughs) that's a a life-threatening illness. Yes, exactly. (laughs) But metal spurts, I mean, for me, it lasts less than a minute, right? Like it's a very brief pain. Got it, mine's like two hours. Oh, really, okay. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, mine's very brief. Mine kind is of like builds. Uh-huh. Interesting, fa- fascinating. Yeah. Huh. Every woman's different. Right. Our bodies are cool. <laughs> I know, right? I love this. <laughs> yes. Um, oh, and then I think it's really important to know, and I think you probably see this all the time with your patients, but my clients feel the most sexy and the most smart right before ovulation. They're just like, I am amazing. I am wonderful. I love myself. Everybody else loves me. (laughs) 
Yes. You know what? The, I saw a really interesting research study, actually, that was a, a marketing research that showed that women are more likely to buy sexy lingerie and cosmetics when they're ovulating. Yeah, we're also considered more desirable. So on ratings of physical attractiveness, we're considered more desirable around ovulation. Same woman, right? Uh, also, voice changes around ovulation. So voice is rated as more desirable and face is rated as more desirable. Yes. That's amazing. Hormones, nature. <laughs> Love this. Just rub it on me, please. <laughs> Ovulating. <laughs> Shall we move on to the luteal phase? Let's move on to the luteal phase. Okay, great. So for me, the luteal phase is where most women are struggling. That's where I see most of the struggles. Um, I see very few struggles in that, what we're calling the second phase after you stop bleeding before you've ovulated. That's usually yeah, yeah. the one quarter like of the cycle where women time. are feeling great. Agreed. Then the egg is released. We get into the luteal phase and if it's balanced, it's lovely, but if it's not balanced, some problems can really arise here. Right. Um, and I think this is a really fun phase to have positive impact for naturopathic medicine on our hormone balance. Oh, for sure. For yeah. sure. Yeah. This is the phase where it really matters. Right. So um, what happens is we have the, we have our, our um, egg that's held in a little capsule. And then when we ovulate, pop, it pops open, the egg comes out, and then the capsule that's left over is called the corpus luteum, mm -hmm. which is how we get the luteal phase. And now that corpus luteum secretes progesterone, the hormone that's raising our body temperature and causing us to have these new symptoms of the luteal phase. And they're very important for conception as well. Absolutely. Progesterone to me is the baby making hormone. Um, and this is ripening the uterine lining, right? So we want yep. a thick, cushy landing spot for that egg if it becomes fertilized. We want it to like really nestle in there and be happy. Yeah, uh, a warm little nest. Exactly. And it's progesterone that makes that warm little nest. So yeah. thank you, luteal phase. Yeah, absolutely. Um, there's some stuff that you have there that I'd love you to talk about within the luteal phase. Yes. Yeah, so, so for me, you know, it, for the average woman, I kind of want to talk about normal cycles okay. because there's this myth that every cycle is the same for every woman. And that's not actually true. Um, I have seen women who's normal, right? And their healthy cycling and their fertile cycling is 27 days. And I've seen women whose healthy fertile cycling is 30 days. The ideal we say is 28. Absolutely. Um, and the with, cycle, sorry, sorry go, go on. Ahead. I was, I was just going to say within 25 and 32, I'm feeling like things are probably okay. Yeah. And if it's going lower than 25 or over 32, I'm paying a little bit more attention to see if there's anything that's off. Yeah. Well, and for me too, if it's really irregular, like it's 22 one month and then 40 the next, that's a problem, right? Like we need to fix Absolutely. that. <laughs> yes. Consistency is super important. If you have a consistent 27 day cycle, probably things are working out pretty well. Exactly. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You're following a good rhythm. Your body is actually in its cycle, but if it's all over the place, then it's all over the place. We need to fix yeah. that. Um, so I kind of want to talk a little bit about the more like esoteric side of menstruating. And not that this is so woo woo, but there's a little bit of woo woo here because to me, menstrual cycle is a cycle that we can actually kind of fashion our lives around, you know, because it's there anyway, it's affecting us anyway. So to me, we can utilize the strengths of different parts of the cycle to really kind of live into that um, mm -hmm. because it's a huge part of who we are. Absolutely. So for me, that first menstrual phase is very much like letting go, getting rid of, minimizing, streamlining, burning away what's no longer useful, and kind of doing quieter inner work, right? Energy is lower, uh, for sure. For most women, energy just, you know, it falls while we're shedding uterine lining because it does. Great. And our hormones are lower, right? So all of everything kind of settles a little bit during menstruation. But to me, it's a great, great time to kind of go internal, do some of that work and prune things out of your life that don't necessarily need to be there. Um, and it, in our show notes, I have like red tent style. And if you don't know what that means, check out the book or subsequent movement called the red tent. 
Um, the book was by Anita Diamante and it's beautiful. So good. I know, I know. It's just mm-hmm. wonderful. But the basic premise is that during, it, it was a biblical book kind of about biblical times. And during those times, they were saying the women who were menstruating were isolated in this red tent, right? So that nobody else would be affected by this unclean time. But it was actually a wonderful, wonderful time for women and for community and for for these women to be free of you know, the rest of their life. They didn't have the men, they didn't have the kids, they didn't have any of the those things. Exactly. They could just be who they were and connect and kind of come inward. Absolutely. Mm-hmm. And I think that's valuable. Yeah. Um, follicular then is exactly what your body is doing, right? It's growth and preparation. So we're bringing ideas into existence. Energy is good. It's on the rise. It's very balanced for a lot of women. And sex drive is increasing, right? So we're seeing just a really great, productive, easy time of the month um, that's incredible for getting things done. Yeah, it's the very, it's the yang phase. Exactly, exactly. Mm -hmm. And then ovulation, we're totally on the top of the world. Energy is highest, sex drive is highest. Obviously, the whole attractivity feature is highest. Um, And generally, we're most likely to feel like total rock stars. Mm -hmm. And then luteal, things start to gradually get slower, get cushier, get nestier and turn inward, right? And so this is where we're starting to internally rearrange the furniture, doing more of the assessment that follows that active burst. And when we're more likely to start noticing things that need to be worked on or tweaked or pruned out in the menstrual phase. Yep, the nesting phase. The nesting phase. I love the nesting phase. And, and I mean, it makes sense too. So the, the hormones that are high in this luteal phase are also the nesty hormones that we get into in pregnancy, yep. which is like the nestiest time of a woman's life. Right? Mm-hmm. So that is definitely when we do our nesting. Kate and I busted time today because, let's face it, we like to talk. Please watch the video version in the show notes. See more of Dr. Kate at namasnd.com. That's N-A-U-M-E-S-N-D.com. Or visit tohealthwiththat.com for myself, Dr. Amy. See you next week.